Hi everyone, welcome to a talk about. In this video, I'm going to be reviewing Dragons of Autumn Twilight, which is volume one of the Dragonlance Chronicles by Margaret Weiss and Tracy Hickman. So if you're interested, please stick around. So I just wanted to go through this book, talk about it, and give you some of my thoughts. I will start with the general story arc. It's really about a group of companions who go on this journey. They start off in this little town called Solus. They all meet up at in this inn that's interestingly built on top of this like tree. And so they all get together and things have already right from the start have changed here, you'll find off right off the bat. And um, it's very different and in this town as well as the companions themselves because they haven't seen each other in so many years they're different some more than others and so they get together here and they find out they get themselves into trouble right off the bat in this inn because there's all these laws they're not aware of things have changed and they don't accept magic at all um people don't like things in certain believe certain things exist really anymore or um they just don't want to uh, go anywhere near it and so they end up having to flee from this inn um, right away and chased by these goblins, which is a mystery why they're even there. And so they, that basically starts their journey. And they're basically told uh, to go to this temple. Just, they're, they're basically gonna help out in the oncoming war that's looming overhead. And so they go on this journey, this quest, and they go through different places like forests, um, plains, over the next few days, um, they go through a lot of, seems to be some dark passageways underground. Um, they do, seem to do a lot of that, like mystery, mysterious, um, dark places. And basically, what's coming is this, basically this dark, evil lord, um, Verminard, um, who's the um, dragon high master, who's basically trying to take over um, this area. So the characters of the story are Tannis, who's really the main character I find of all the companions. This has to do with his leadership. He's always trying to, uh, he's always taking charge and deciding the plans. And also the authors seem to um, dwell a lot on uh, this character. He's half man, half elf, which does give him a lot of problems in general. Um, people don't really accept him in both um, different kinds of people he meets. And in general, I find that um, the people, the humans, um, everybody doesn't really like elves in general, but I think the elves probably treat him worse for it. Because elves in general, they are kind of separate from people, they kind of separate themselves from people, so it kind of gives people them problems. But so they all just don't understand each other, and so he has problems with being half of each. The next character is Sturm Brightblade who's really a knight that you can think of in any kind of legendary stories from the past. He's that typical character of a knight uh, from like fairy tales or whatever. He has a mustache and he has all his, you know, he carries a sword and armor he has on and he's very all about honor very much. He's one of the better um, fighters of the group and he's good for whenever they get into a fight. Um, but he has, takes his honor to hold on a level I find. Just um and in war and also outside of war, um, outside of battle and stuff. So, and he basically takes honor to hold another level. And sometimes I don't know if it even is honor anymore, but he is just basically he's very much um, in this character of honor and being a knight. The Plainswoman Goldmoon, who is a chieftain's daughter of the Plains. And she really has a lot to do with very important figure of the story. Um, she's a lot of this going on, a lot of emotional background stuff, a lot of things going on currently, and a lot of the, the story is dumped on her, really, on her shoulders. So she has a lot to um, take with her, and she has this magical staff that everyone seems to want, and that she has uh, gotten. And so, and she just really, things develop with her um, along with the story, and um, she's just basically thrown into all of this. Um, with everything. And then the character Riverwind, 
who basically comes from the same place as um, Goldmoon, and he's they're basically in love with each other. They were given problems, and that's kind of part of the reason why they left. And so um, he's always near her, trying to protect her, and their love basically kind of grows along the way. It's different at certain different times, and you see that throughout the, the book. Then there's the character Rastlin, who is a mage, and really one of the most important figures actually too as well. And he's um, so he's a powerful mage, and he's very um, because of this magic, he's his his really bad health, and he's kind of just formed because of it. Um, that gives him, and I found that to any other book that I've actually read, he's the most uh, he, he's really hurt the most of any other book from magic. Um, really, you know, how it affects him, but it gives him a lot of power as well. And he's very, very different of a character. People can't really figure him out all the time. They always keep secrets hidden within him. And people don't always trust him for sure. And there's a lot going on. He's very, um, very to the point of what should be done with something. And um, he doesn't have much love in general for people, but even though I think there is a little bit of that, but it's very not much his character anymore. Um, because of the magic he has developed, he's always wanting power because of this. And so he's really kind of changed a lot because of accepting this magic and um, taking on this role in life. And there's just a lot to find out with him um, that's going on behind the scenes. The brother of Rastlin, Karaman, who's really the extreme opposite. Uh, he's really a tall man. He's taller than the rest of them. Towers over them. He's almost like a giant in a way. He's very uh, huge. He's always used for strength. And he's obviously the, one of the better ones in battle. And he um, he's like this. And he also... Um, he's, very mind, he's very good at battle tactics. But not necessarily other things outside of it. And so... Um, so he has problems dealing with sometimes things outside of that. He's not really the leader, but um, he's kind of headstrong in a way. But I kind of, you can't really blame him all the time because I don't think he's always told things what's going on and so he really can't understand. But yeah, he's very, he's more geared and, or, geared and orientated to battle um, type scenarios. Flint Fireforge, who is a dwarf and really the more serious, probably the, actually the most serious of all the characters in a way. He's very dismal and, about things. He's really old though too. He's also the oldest character of all of them and for dwarves he's obviously they live longer but he's also very old for a dwarf. He has gray hair and he's been friends with some of them like Tannis for a long time but he's definitely a person with um, a cup half empty in a way and he's um, yeah he's just kind of I find that he kind of brings the, um, the commandants down a lot, but I think he's also a good, like, balanced extreme in a sense. There's like, different extreme personalities, so it helps kind of for different scenarios. It kind of you know, brings interesting um, development within it because of his character. There's a character, Tathlahoff Burfoot, who's a kender and a lot smaller than the rest of them. He is kind of the one that takes care of all the locks they need to get through. He's very good at getting through locks and he's also the map guy. He has the map always with him and he's always um, trying to get uh, develop more to his map and he's one to go to for that. He's also doesn't, he can't, as a um, Kender, he can't um, have any fear at all. It's impossible for him to fear his, who he is. And he's also um, very curious though. Very, very curious to the extreme of anything. Even if it's good or bad, he just wants to need to know. And so because of these two things being very curious and also having no fear, it gets into a lot of, lot of problems a lot of the time. So most of these main characters that I mentioned were already friends before the book actually even started. And uh, from years in the past with like Tannis, Sturm, Rastlin, Karaman, Flint, and Tass. And, but the other two characters that joined them from the very beginning, they joined their group. Um, uh, Gold Moon and Riverwind weren't friends at the start, and so they kind of have to develop throughout this book their um, friendship and their trust. So I do think there's a bit of a problem with these characters throughout the book uh, that the authors create. There's a little too much information given to about them, and from the very beginning, and it's very technically a lot dropped on you. And I rather like 
found out throughout the book a little bit more about them and give me given a, obviously they're given a little bit in the very beginning but it could have been a little bit less information and more to understand along the way but it's not just even that it's the fact that they're very they're giving very very um distinctive roles because of who they are their kind like a plans man can only do this or a um, a dwarf is like this the knight for instance his honor they're, it's not just him, it's every knight out there has this honor problem, which, okay, I kind of can understand, but it's to an extreme extent. Or, like, Tass, he can't feel fear. Or it just throughout the... It's very, very extreme that they can only be like this. And I think there could be some a little bit of uniqueness with uh, different kinds of beings that they couldn't... They could be a little bit more individually themselves. Um, it couldn't have been just like, oh, this is who they are, and there's nothing you can change about it. So I think this is kind of a problem that I didn't really like in this book. So the world of this book was, to me, very traditional in the fantasy genre with its elves and dwarves and uh, magic alongside humans and everything. Um, it, it's really like an old, like, old traditional fantasy book or old fa fairy tales, really, when you the way it's written as well. But I do believe the world was unique to itself. It was built um, very differently. Um, in this book particular, obviously there's a larger series where it's broader, the story, the whole world's broader and bigger. I thought you got a sense when you read this book, though, that it was quite small. Uh, everything was only a few days' journey from each other. and But I do think that there could have been more developed a little bit um, with uh, past history. Um, the way the authors did work was a lot of things were found out along the way, which is fine. But I think a little bit more could have been um, told about some things. And I did like um, the magic, uh, the way it was kind of this kind of the fun they had with it in a certain sense, with this kind of the funny jokes they did with it. I thought this book was good. It wasn't the most deep type of storyline, but more of the fun, light, adventurous kind. And I really liked the ending. It was satisfying to me. Um, I think personally that books should be able to, at a certain point, be able to suck you in and uh, just take you on an adventure and at a certain point near the end i think you should be able to want to know what's going to happen at the end and kind of it should move faster in a way to you and it definitely did this and i recommend uh, um, reading this book if you're into this kind of genre i hope you enjoyed this video if you did like it please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe if you'd like to watch more videos i hope to see you next time thanks for watching